welcome to Watch Me Code. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install RabbitMQ on Ubuntu Linux. Now, if you're not familiar with RabbitMQ, it's a robust messaging system for developing applications in a distributed manner. It allows you to communicate between applications or processes using a message-based architecture instead of using other protocols like HTTP or any other remote procedure calls that you may have done in the past. To get rolling, I'm going to head over to the installation page here. And one thing you want to do is avoid these quick download links. I keep clicking these by accident, but what you really want to do is head down to the installation guides right here. Now in my case, I'm on Ubuntu, so I'm going to hit the Debian Ubuntu installation guide. And if you read through this documentation real quick, you'll see that RabbitMQ actually is included with Debian since version 6.0. So that means it should be available on Ubuntu as well. So I'm going to go ahead and run sudo rabbitmq server start. And in my case, I actually have it running already. So while RabbitMQ is already installed and running on my Ubuntu box, it is going to be an older version because the distribution of this Ubuntu box is a little bit old, and I want to make sure that I have the up-to-date version of Rabbit, so I'm going to go ahead and walk through the installation instructions on that page. To do that, then I'm going to scroll down here a little ways, and I'm going to add this apt repository. So I'm going to copy and paste here, head back over to my console window, and run sudo add apt repository, and quote everything that I had just copied out of that page. And it looks like I missed my copy, so let me get that. And paste. All right. So now that we've added the repository, I'm going to run this wget to get the, the signing key. Head back over to the page here and run the sudo apt key command. Next, I'll run apt-get update. And this is going to pull down all the information that I need to install RabbitMQ and update a whole lot of other things probably. All right, now that we have that all done, I can run the apt-get to install RabbitMQ. Now, as I said before, I actually do have RabbitMQ installed on this box already, but I want to get the latest and greatest updated version of RabbitMQ instead of the older version that was previously there. So as you can see, it's replacing version 3.1 with version 3.4. And it looks like it automatically started the RabbitMQ server for me. And I can test that by running sudo RabbitMQ CTL status. And it looks like there is a RabbitMQ server running. So now I'm going to go back over to localhost 15672. And when I load up the management plugin, I'm going to log in as guest and guest. And see that RabbitMQ is in fact running, and it is version 3.4.3. .3. Now, if hitting localhost colon 15672 doesn't work for you, if it doesn't show up, you can come back over to the command line and run sudo rabbitmq plugins enable rabbitmq underscore management. And this will enable the six plugins that you need in order to run the management website. In my case, there's nothing to do, so it didn't do anything. Once you've done that, though, you can hit localhost colon 15672 and log into the management interface. Now, the management interface is nice and powerful, but being a Linux person, you're definitely going to want to use the command line tools more often. It's a little bit faster, a little bit easier, and it's more automatable than the website is. But the management interface here on the website is definitely useful for looking at the exchanges, queues, and messages inside of those queues once you have everything set up and running. For now, though, this is all I'm going to show you. Stay tuned for another episode of Watch Me Code where I do show you how to use the command line a little bit more and also show you how to use the management interface to send and receive a message.